It's your Idaho Central app here. Any chance you're missing a debit card? Let's get that taken care of for you. With ICCU's card control, you can turn any card off with the tap of your finger. You've got it. And back on again. Ow, 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 ow. The closest Idaho Central Credit Union branch is in your pocket. Ooh, the gym. Mold stomping grounds. <laughs> Hank Patterson, fly fishing guide. Riley Smith, tight end. Yeah, I appreciate that. Hey, you wouldn't happen to be the kicker. No, tight end. Again, thank you. I'm looking for a kicker for Lithia Ford's fall kickoff sale. But you're not the kicker. No. Yeah. Now nah, the kicker's probably taller and in a lot better shape. So, okay. What uh, position do you play? Tight end. Squats. Yeah. Try it sometime. RowPaint.com, the official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics, is going all in this season with an all-star lineup. First up, he led the Broncos to three conference championships and 10 20-win seasons. It's coach Leon Rice. Next, he's the founder and CEO of RowPaint.com. He played a little basketball in high school on the driveway with his mom. It's Andy Rowe. Oh, no. Want to just paint my house? Now that I can do. When I want Boise State to win, I trust Coach Rice to lead the Broncos to victory. And when I want the best painting and garage floor coating, I trust RowPaint.com to get that job done right. This is Bronco Nation News Live. The best interviews, the most informed opinions, the latest breaking news, all from the top Boise State insiders. Today's broadcast is coming from the Cutwater Spirits Can Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of pre-mixed premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Cutwater Can Cocktails is perfect for your next game day tailgate party. Now, here's four-time NSMA Idaho Sports Writer of the Year, BJ Rains, with another edition of Bronco Nation News Live. Hey, how we doing, uh, Boise State fans? Happy Monday to you. What a sight at 9 a.m. You're ready for your new work week, and you get to see Mike Prater and myself uh, on your screen there. So happy to kick off another week of Bronco Nation News Live, another week of spring football coverage, uh, another week of Boise State sports coverage here in the Treasure Valley. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. We're on X. We're all over the social media platforms, but of course, hopefully you are a, a paying subscriber at BroncoNationNews.com. We'd love to have you. Still offering that uh, first year for $50 using that promo code BNN50DEAL. Uh, BNN50DEAL, you see it at the bottom of the screen. You get a full year, and then every other year it just goes up 20 bucks to $70. So we'd love to have your support. We got big plans this summer to hopefully continue to uh, expand and add and do some cool things. And I know Mike Prater is getting uh, his... Uh, creative competitive whatever kind of words you want to go say uh controversial juices flowing in that uh head of his and uh he's gonna have some uh weekly columns here for the next three four weeks to get us through spring ball so uh, now's the perfect time to jump in with a subscription but uh mike we're down to the final four we had uh, opening day over the weekend my uh cardinals were five outs from splitting the first series against the dodgers instead they fall down one and three and then lo and behold today is april fool's day so of course you had you oh. always you always wonder which year it is which which school it is but it was duke this year that uh, put out the graphic of them with a blue field uh so we'll, we'll uh you know just just remember it is april fool's day today no no jokes on this show uh except that you're stuck with mike prater and i for the next 40 minutes but uh mike uh how we doing happy monday man 
I'm doing well, BJ. It's uh, it's good to be here. I forgot it was April Fool's Day. That's terrible. It used to be one of my favorite holidays, especially when I had kids. You got the perfect kids. I, I hope you're duping your kids and and, con- and confusing them. I used to take my kids to school uh, in the mornings, and I remember one April Fool's Day, I, I got up in the middle of the night and hid my car around the corner, and then when we got up to go to school the next morning, I, I April fooled them into thinking that our car had been stolen, and uh, it, it kind of backfired because they ended up screaming and crying and it turned out to be a very bad situation. So be careful what you do on April Fool's Day. <laughs> yeah, I saw. Uh, I, I was laying in bed scrolling Twitter like I usually do, and I did see the, uh, uh, I think it was Florida Atlantic or somebody saying one of their football games is going to be played on an air, aircraft carrier. And I thought, man, that's a, is that big enough? Is that, it took me about five <laughs> seconds to realize, like, oh, okay, that's what we got going on here. Uh, but uh, so, yeah, don't, don't fall for it. I, sh- I should have tried to get you, Mike Prater. I didn't think about it. You would have, I would have been uh, gullible this morning because I completely forgot about it. And it kind of, that's, that's the vulnerability of, of April Fool's Day. But uh, I, I promise you that here we're going to have our staff meeting here at Idaho Sports Talk in about an hour. I promise you that Johnny and JP right now are whipping up some, some uh, April Fool's Day's ideas. Uh, we've, we've been known to do that around here. So uh, just keep your guard up all day long. It's going to be one of those days. In the middle, in, you know, April 1st, not a ton going on. That seems like a perfect way to, kill a 12 12 minute uh idaho yeah. sports talk segment april yes. fool jokes uh what would be <laughs> i can already i can already uh see that coming but uh by the way i can report mike prater that uh my head coaching uh, i guess my season debut as a head coach came over the weekend i was a head coach last year also on my boys baseball teams uh two games in the books on friday and saturday one tie and one walk-off win so we are uh, undefeated through two games nice. that's the way it should be baby opening yes. day weekend worked now, I asked Spencer Danielson on Thursday if he had any tips for me, and he said, get tossed in the first inning of the first game, set the tone for the season. Uh, but uh, but uh, there's a no-tolerance policy in this league, so I would have been done for the season. So I decided to, I did not take Spencer Danielson's advice and get ejected in the first inning. May have wanted to after a couple uh, calls, but uh, no, I, I uh, we had fun. Boys did good. The boys are playing on the same team for the first time, Mike Prater. I, I convinced the league, if I was a head coach, to let my younger son play up two levels. So he's a little overmatched at the plate, but he actually came in and pitched and and did okay. And he uh, ended up batting with the bases loaded, tie game in the last inning, last uh, two outs, full count, and drew a walk to uh, for the walk off walk for my uh, six year old. So perfect, uh, nicely done, little, nicely little, done. Fun little Saturday afternoon at the Rains household. Both the boys are are uh, are doing uh, fun playing baseball, and and uh, I think that should be a, a Mike Prater column. Get get you out, and rip, you know, my coaching style or something out there at Meridian Youth yeah. Baseball. If you get tossed, I will do it. I mean, couldn't you get tossed and then just say Spencer Danielson made me do it? Wouldn't that excuse work around here? I mean, it should. Whatever it should. Spencer Danielson yeah. or Leon Rice say to do, it should be a lot. I mean, you know, unless it's some federal crime, you should be good to go. But no, I uh, we had a fun weekend. Hope everybody had a good Easter and, and got to spend some time with friends, family. The weather, Mike Prater, is uh, beautiful today. It's a little cool, but we finally have the sun out. I know it's going to be a little spotty. Uh, in terms of the weather here and, uh, you know, grain and, and a little bit more cold for the next week or two, I would like it for it to completely start to work. We're not quite totally, I feel like, in spring weather, but we're getting there. Yeah, I played golf yesterday. I know you're going to bring up golf here in a little bit. I played golf yesterday, and it was probably the most miserable five hours of my life. 55 degrees and 35 mile an hour winds, and uh, I had 17 layers of clothes on, and it was just a uh, it was typical Idaho spring weather. I mean, the sun was out. It looked good when you're in your house and you look out the window and you go outside and you think, oh, I can handle this. And then five hours later, it's like the most miserable, stupidest thing you've ever done. So uh, hopefully uh, we can get through this. But it's just another typical day. And I know Boise State football has got some spring golf ball going on. They'll probably be on the blue at first thing at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll be uh, back out in the elements again, BJ. I thought you were just saying your golf game period was a miser- made it a miserable day, but I guess the weather uh, could help. Yes, a little bit of both, a little definitely a little bit of both. Nothing like a quadruple bogey to open up the day in, in nasty conditions, but uh, at least it got a little bit better after that. I have yet to play my first spring round. I'm looking forward to getting out to uh, Timberstone. We do have some news on that coming. I'll get to that in a minute, uh, Mike Prater. But you put out a tweet last night. I, we're going to talk mostly football today, but I, so now that we have the final four set, uh, let's start for a few minutes here with basketball. Uh, Jace Whiting entering the transfer portal last week. Uh, BNN first reported that last Thursday afternoon. Uh, but uh, I guess the, the bigger, I guess more immediate, I don't even know if it's news, but just noteworthy item. Uh, as of midnight last night, Mike Prater, a, uh, a new uh, 
a new raise for Leon Rice and a new uh, a new level hit that uh, hasn't been hit here before for a Boise State basketball coach. Yeah, making history at midnight when nobody else is looking. So, yeah, Leon Rice's contract last night kicked in at, at midnight, April 1st, 2024. Dude gets about a $50,000 bait raise in his base salary for the first time in school history. Boise State has a $1 million basketball coach today, guys. So that kicked in last night, and and the Leon Rice is making a million dollars. I know that's polarizing. Some of you think that it's well money, money well spent, that it's worth it that Boise State's investing in its basketball program and it's getting the dividends that it's looking for. And it's so extreme that there's plenty of other people out there that think that that's a complete total waste of money and the dude should be fired. So uh, that part, I think, is ridiculous. The million-dollar part, I think, is spectacular. I love it. First of all, it's not my money. So good for Jeremiah Dickey and taking that contract and giving him the money and and, and good for Leon Rice for, for making that. I've never been a big fan of Leon Rice's contract, but... I think he's worth a million bucks. He's put in the time. He's put in the effort. Yeah, we'd like to see some different results at times. That's not really how you do contracts. So uh, the fact that he's making a million, Spencer Danielson, the football coach, is 1.1. There's a $100,000 gap in the football and basketball coach at Boise State. That's never happened. There's never been a million-dollar basketball coach at Boise State. So it's kind of a weird time right now in terms of uh, the money and, and the coaching status and everything that's going on at Boise State. But Leon Rice. He can wake up this morning and look his wife in the eye and say, honey, I'm a million-dollar coach, baby. Yeah, I mean, and you look at some of the uh, coach salaries uh, in the league, Mike Prater. I mean, I, I know, again, there's a, a portion of the fan base that wants more and is, is not happy with the 14 years and wants to, uh, you know, maybe just have a fresh start, whatever. I get it, but, uh, I mean – I hate to say it, but for a million dollars for a basketball coach in the Mountain West that's got you the tournament three straight years, had you in the hunt for regular season titles, won 20-plus games, it's, it's kind of a steal, to be honest with you, when you look at what some of the other coaches in the league are making. I mean, uh, Danny Sprinkle came in last year from Montana State, his first year right away before he had done any of the stuff he did at Utah State and made 900000 in his first year. Um, and then he parlayed that, obviously. But Nico Medved, I believe, Steve Alford, Brian Dutcher, uh, Richard Patino. There's a lot of coaches in this league making well over a million dollars already. So yep. um, you can say what you want about it, and, but but I, I mean, for for if you're just counting it on March Madness wins, you know, sure you can say that they're paying too much. But if you factor in a lot of the other things that go along with it, and you know, wins, you know, per, money per win, you know, during the regular season, whatever else you want to say, uh, he's actually you could still make it make a case probably a little underpaid. Um, yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, especially the tenure. I mean, if you're at, if you're at one job in this business in this profession for 14 years at a high level, uh, yeah, absolutely, you can make a case for he's underpaid. Anybody at those other schools, they're there for 14 years, they're probably pushing two million. And I know a couple of them. I think Dutcher's pushing two million, maybe over two million. But I, I get it. He's he's a little bit special, and he lives in a market that demands that kind of money. So take him out. He's he's a little bit of an outlier there. But yes, 14 years and the success, the winningest coach in school history, and done so many other different things and it's not like he doesn't have more money because he's not winning NCAA tournament games that it doesn't work that way so uh Boise State basketball has always been a little bit behind as Boise State you know continues to play the arms race and the money race and the contract race and they're just kind of slowly catching up so Leon Rice putting in the 14 years absolutely worth a million dollars and I and I wouldn't even be a pro I wouldn't be an issue with uh 1.5 if his if he woke up this morning and was a 1.5 million dollar coach I got no problem with that and uh, but you would want Spencer Danielson at one point five one. You I mean you, you absolutely you probably absolutely. need the football coach. I mean it, it, this is the clo you mentioned, but this is the closest they've ever been. I think a hundred thousand dollar span. Uh, I don't think we'll ever get to that point where where it crosses over. But who oh. knows? Sweet sweet sixteen run this year or something, and you got to give Leon a new deal for a year. I mean who knows? But uh, I, I that is you know and um, again I I know the the postseason success and there's some people that have soured a little bit but I think the the most rational fans that just say hey keep me entertained till football season starts uh you're getting more than your money's worth in terms of what you're getting in terms of a a uh, quality program you know you're not hearing about guys getting arrested you're having good character guys they're out in the community you're winning games they've won 80 plus percent of their games at home so you know you're going to see a entertaining game at extra mile arena for the most part you know a team that's going to be in the top part of the standings fighting for a spot in March Madness pretty much every year and uh, so yeah, I think it's pretty good value to be honest. And we'll see. Um, this is what year three now, or year two? What, was this going into year three of this deal? Was it nine fifty the first year, then nine seventy five? Yes. yes. Now yes. this is year three of a five year deal. So um, we'll, we'll have to uh, you know keep an eye on that, I guess, moving forward here. But 
Uh, with that said, Mike Prater, and again, I know it's it, you know the final four is set. We're still only it's hard to believe like nine what ten days from when Boise State's season ended last year. It seems like it's been a, a month already or two months. Um, but talking to some people behind the scenes and things. First of all, I know you kind of downplayed it, but I mean the Washington thing to get that out of the way. I, I do think there was some interest there on, on both sides. Danny Sprinkle going there puts that to bed. There's no other jobs really that right now would would interest Leon. I think he's locked set back next year. Everybody's good. Coaching staff's coming back. I know there was some rumors. Maybe Mike Burns' name had been out there for some of the uh, smaller head coaching jobs if he wanted to dabble back into that. Um, but it, it sounds like you know the coaching staff's going to stay the same and everybody's back and ready to go. Uh, and now they're already working to build that roster. We, we talked about it last week, I think, with uh, the Reed kid. His name popped up. We've seen a couple other names pop up in terms of Boise State being interested in. We do have our first departure. It happened last Thursday, as I said, Jace Whiting uh, entering the transfer portal. Um, I like Jace Whiting. I think I said it last week. I think he uh, is a player that is certainly a serviceable player, can help you win, but, um, you know, at times looked a little overmatched at this level. I still think that he didn't get a, a big chance at times to really show what he can do. He's he's kind of more of a shooter, you know, and we didn't really see him shoot much um, in this offense. Um, but he's going to look to go elsewhere, so you now have at least one extra spot. Um, I would suspect at least one more, whether it's Keen or Kobe Young probably leaving as well. Um, they're going to have a couple spots here, Mike Prater, and if they can bring back who they want to bring back, I know we touched on this last week, but um, – Another spot open up now, and I really do think they believe they can find the right pieces and add the kind of impact players like they did with Omar Stanley, Roddy Anderson, and Cam Martin added to this group that's coming back. I mean, the million dollars uh, for Leon Rice, they're, 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 they're you know paying him a lot of money, but I think they really do feel like, and again, I know every year it's the same thing, wait till next year, best team ever, here it comes the next year, I get it. But I do think that they feel like they're still progressing in the right direction, and maybe this is finally the year that they can put that type of roster together that could help them reach that next step. Yeah, I mean, I would never say that. I know why you say it. I, 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 I'm, I'm a little bit more on the jaded side still, and I'm tired of saying wait till next year, and I just refuse to even say that that's, anymore. That's what but, they're saying. I didn't say I'm saying that. No, I, I understand that. I understand that. And that's for Jace Whiting. I've never had such strong emotions for a and I hate to say it this way, for a player that's just kind of irrelevant. And, and, you know, I know that sounds strong, but he really never really got traction with this basketball program. And, and like you said, I, I love Jace Whiting as a person. I've had a chance to meet him. I know his family a little bit. I think he's such a quality dude. I mean, he's from first of all, he's from Burley, Idaho. Anybody from Burley, Idaho is a is a rock-solid dude, if you ask me. I love that place and, 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 and what they create there. And, and he came here with great basketball skill. But he just doesn't have those physical tools in his belt. He's got serious physical limitations. And every time he's up against a bigger, stronger, faster guard, uh, he's going to get beat up a little bit. And I said a couple weeks ago on Idaho Sports Talk that I wanted him to go. And I really, really upset was upset about that because I like watching him play, even though he frustrates me a little bit. I think he's out there hustling. I think his intentions are pure. I think he's saying and trying to do all the right things. But just go play like at a Weber State or a Utah Valley, and you can go hang out with mom and family, and they all live down there in that area. And you could be a starting point guard in the big sky. You can be a starting point guard at that level, and you could be an impact player at that guard. He's really, really skilled. And if he gets his confidence together, he can be a great shooter. I mean, a really, really good shooter that can make a difference. And that's what I want. And Boise State basketball is a great shooter. And I think he could have been that, but he just didn't have the skill in other departments to fit with this Boise State basketball team. So I'm glad Boise State has an opening. I'm glad Jace Whiting is going to go off and try to play basketball somewhere. And I'll be watching his career. I love that dude and can't wait to see what happens with that guy. Again, they definitely need a shooter. They definitely need another guard that can play make and get to the rim and cross guys over and create his own shot a la Roddy Anderson. Maybe that's the same guy that's the shooter and the playmaker. Maybe it's two separate guys. I don't know. And they obviously need another big man or two um, because you lose Mo Silla even as your third big up, backup big, and then you lose, obviously, Cam Martin. So they need, they got some spots to fill. They got some uh, you know piece, uh, available scholarships now to do that. And we'll see as things shake out here. I mean, there's already over a thousand players, Mike Prater, in the transfer portal, and that number is expected to only increase. You still have almost a month that that transfer portal is still open for, so um, it, it's going to continue to shake out. A lot more names that aren't even out there yet are going to enter. Boise State's going to, I think, take its time and look for the right fits. And again, if they can, if they can, you know, again, I don't think anybody would argue. You know, you can say what you want about Cam Martin, but the, he was injured. I still think ended up being a net positive in terms of adding him to this team. Uh, you know, in terms of the, the addition. But if you can get another 
Omar Stanley, Roddy Anderson, man, you're literally talking two starters you plucked out of the transfer portal. You can find two quality players like that to add to the group coming back. I mean, I, there, there would be plenty of reason for optimism if you're, you know, a Boise State basketball fan moving forward. So we'll see what happens. Any thought? Any thoughts on the uh, the final four here? UConn and uh, Arizona, or Air UConn and uh, Alabama, and then you got uh, Purdue and NC State. No, no. I mean, at this point, it looks like it's a UConn thing, and that's just. I mean, I mean, I'm just writing off the emotions of what everybody else is saying that UConn's going to be the dominant team here. We'll see how it all plays out. I'm still expecting one magical moment in the NCAA tournament. It really hasn't happened yet. It's been kind of a a, a chalk tournament. Uh, I mean, I know there's been a few moments here, a few moments there, but you know, one shining moment uh, here in another week is going to be very, very interesting because uh, you know there really hasn't been that one shining moment yet. Could it happen in the Final Four? Could Illinois pull the, the upset that we don't expect? I don't know. We'll see how it all plays out. But uh, I, I'm kind of excited to see what happens, and we'll uh, we'll see how it shakes out. Yeah, looking forward to the Final Four next week. But again, yeah, it is unfortunately looking like it could be UConn back-to-back as they're just steamrolling teams right now. Uh, but uh, we'll be uh, paying attention to that Saturday in Phoenix is the final four. Got a, a cool announcement to officially make, but uh, first I want to tell you about a couple of our great sponsors here. Cutwater Spirits, more than 35 flavors of pre-mixed premium cocktails. You can pick one up at your local a gas station or grocery store. Our studio sponsor here at Bronco Nation News. Don't worry about the mixing and all the different things you need. And Oh, I didn't get this mixer. Oh, I don't have the lime juice, this or that. Cutwater Spirits does everything for you. Ready to go right out of the can. Pre-mixed premium cocktails, Cutwater Spirits. I'm wearing that. A uh, shirt today, Mike Prater's wearing their hat, ropepaint.com. We appreciate our title sponsor, ropaint.com. They came out and painted our entire house. Mike Prater did a tremendous job. We're very happy with the service from ropepaint.com. So uh, the official paint and coatings company at Boise State Athletics. And, uh, again, ropaint.com, all your residential, commercial, industrial painting needs. Check them out at ropepaint.com. And, of course, those concrete coatings, perfect for the spring here to get that done and uh, transform the look of your garage or back patio. ICCU, ICCU.com. They're supporting Tyson Degenhart and the local community that you can uh, return the favor, switch your banking over to Idaho Central Credit Union. But uh, believe me, I, I switched mine over as part of my deal with them. Hadn't you know heard much about them, focus on them much. And once we made the switch, I was really mad I didn't do it earlier. ICCU.com, their mobile e-branch online banking, so easy to use. I've been into a branch like three times in the three years I've been working with them. You can do it all from your computer, all from your phone. You can. It's just so easy to use, and I'm, I'm so grateful we made the switch, but I really wish we had done it sooner. So uh, get, for the best experience in, uh, in banking, all your banking needs, make the switch today to Idaho Central Credit Union. 13 locations in the state of Idaho for Ridley's Family Markets. Check them out as well. ShopRidley's.com. Ridley's Family Markets. You can get uh, download their app. Get savings up to 40% off at the checkout line. And again, find a location near you at ShopRidley's.com. And Bowser Real Estate, I've been working with Matt and Kelly and the team over there, and they're doing a tremendous job. I can see firsthand, Mike, why they're the number one realtor in the state of Idaho. Bowser Real Estate, first-class service, first-class organization. They put the customer experience first, the customer's decision, desires first, and I've, I've experienced that firsthand. And Matt's not just helping me out because I'm a sponsor. I am a, getting the same service that everybody else gets, and I highly recommend you make the switch uh, today. Bowser Real Estate. If you, Everyone knows a realtor. Everyone's got friends that are realtors. I get it, but uh, you will not be disappointed with Matt Bowser and his team at Bowser Real Estate. Get more information at Bowser Real Estate. Dot com. All right, Mike Prater, I mentioned the weather. We are going to talk football, spring football here in a few minutes, but I want to uh, officially announce we had talked about it. We had told people to save the date, but uh, now officially on sale. You can buy your foursome right now before they sell out for the uh, third annual Bronco Nation News Golf Tournament, May 31st. It's at Timberstone Golf Course, presented by RowPaint.com and Idaho Central Credit Union. Uh, you see all the happy folks on the screen there that have participated in the last two years been a lot of fun to see this thing grow and uh we're gonna have a lot of fun with this some special guests uh it's gonna be a lot of fun we have the morning flight tees off at 8 30 the afternoon flight tees off at 1 30 this is benefiting the idaho youth sports commission we're gonna have a second or third charity involved as well this is not some tournament that just um you know lets me and mike prater uh, fill our pockets with cash here this is uh mostly going to charity we do help with some of the expenses and some of the travel expenses and things that come with bnn but this is not a money-making tournament for us this is to get back to the community and mostly just to have fun on the golf course and 
hang out with fans and subscribers and friends and just have a, a fun day out there on the course. Uh, and uh, we, we had, you know, Coach Rice out there last year. We had a lot of cool folks out there. We've had many members of the basketball staff the last two years. I know, Mike Prater, you guys have done your show out there. Um, and uh, it's a lot of fun. I know, Johnny, you guys had uh, DJ Shram, Riley Smith on uh, live. You guys pulled them off the course to come to a live interview with you last year. So uh, we had about 10 football players come out. You can see them there on NIL deals. Jonah Dalmas, Riley Smith. You had uh, DJ Shram, Alexander Tubner, uh, Maddox Madsen, Kekala Kania. Who would have known Maddox Madsen playing in this tournament? What his 2023 season would have been like? So, um, Perfect day, Mike, to hang out, mingle with some of your favorite players, coaches, friends, boosters, whatever. And and uh, we're looking forward to it May 31st and uh, looking forward to having you guys out there broadcasting again as well. Oh, I love this day. It's such a fun day. You get up early and you get out there and Timberstone Golf Course is such a cool facility and you get out there and the, it just the air smells different and it feels different and it it's just a different kind of vibe and I love it out there and you do a really good job. I know these things are hard work. I've had to put these tournaments on in the past and it's logistically just a pain in the butt. So kudos to you for putting it together. It's kind of a one-man show with you and your family uh, doing this entire thing. And uh, it's worth it, guys. I promise you, BJ makes it absolutely worth it with the food. And you're going to feel satisfied about the money you spend for this tournament before you even tee off the breakfast and the food and the vibe and the camaraderie and all that kind of stuff. And then you just get to go out and play golf with your buddies and hang out and have a good time and there's some food in between, and I know that there's we're going to have our show, and uh, we're going to have some fun. Ball game and I will be out there goofing around, having a good time. So it's a beautiful day. It's a long day. But come on, guys, get involved, and let's play some golf and have a good time. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned the breakfast. Tyson Degenhart, there he is, had the Degenhart dozens last year out there. We'll have that out there uh, again. Uh, you had uh, Coach Rice out there. There's Jim Sterk from Lithia Ford uh, doing the hole-in-one, and they're doing that again, Mike Prater. So you can upgrade your vehicle. You get another chance uh, this year with a uh, hole-in-one on hole six at Timberstone uh, to get a, a new vehicle. Uh, Coach Durier there with uh, Tyson. Tyson did the uh, celebrity shot last year. Every single group that played got a chance to meet Tyson, get their picture with them, and uh, he signed a ball for you, and then he hit that ball uh, down onto the green. We're working on some cool things with him and with some other players as well. And, uh, again, as you said, you know, we had Coach Riddle out there, Winston Venable, uh, Dustin Camper. I mean, it was a really cool kind of who's who. And I can uh, officially announce Mike Prater got it confirmed and okayed last night by uh, this gentleman for me to announce that he is coming. You know, it's never really worked out with the football staff because of uh, uh, they've had camps and they have to leave town and do things. And so we've had the basketball coaches, some of the football players. But uh, I can confirm now that our, our uh, special guest uh, for the first time at our tournament. Spencer Danielson will be at the uh, tournament. Uh, they have to leave early because they're flying. He's actually pushing back the entire coaching staff's flight uh, to Texas for a recruiting for a, a camp in Texas on that next day so he can make an appearance. Uh, we are doing an event also, Mike Prater, which I don't even know if I've told you about, but hopefully you can come uh, the, <laughs> the, uh, the, the night before. We, you, know, we had the, you mentioned the two flights, the morning, the afternoon. We had a little bit of a lull in the middle where it took a little while and some groups weren't finished yet and we got started a little late and there was a lot going on. So to ease my plate a little bit and just make sat, uh, Friday more about the golf and the lunch, uh, we are going to do, I don't know if we're calling it a pairings party or what it's going to be, but we will have an event for folks that are in the tournament on Thursday evening, the night before the tournament. And uh, Coach Danielson is going to speak at that event also. And then uh, hopefully Coach Rice, we're working to confirm that, some of the other ones. But uh, going to be a pretty cool opportunity, a Q&A. You can ask some questions to Coach Danielson, hopefully some at least somebody from the basketball staff. Um, we're going to invite Jeremiah Dickey as well, but he's been on vacation that week, the last two weeks. It's the Friday after Memorial Day, right after, right when kids are getting out of school. Um, but uh, you're helping out a good cause. Have some drinks, hang out, and again, we'll have something on Thursday night, uh, and then we might even like bid out some of the higher-priced, uh, you know, our bigger celebrities, and you can donate to the charity and have them play in your foursome, and then the tournament will be on Friday. So you can email me, reigns at bronconationnews.com. You can go to bronconationnews.com slash golf to get more information on this as well. You can Venmo uh, Bronco Nation News and, and send, email me your names, or you can uh, send me an email and we'll send you an invoice via, you know, to pay with a credit card. But we're expecting this to sell out, Mike Prater. We had 30 foursomes our first year, up to 50 foursomes last year when we added the afternoon flight. We can take up to 64, and I'm, I'm hoping we can sell this thing out morning, afternoon. And uh, again, if you were on the fence about it, you get a chance to watch Mike Prater and Johnny Mallory broadcast live for three hours. I don't know what could be better. 
Um, but uh, I know you guys had Larry Eustacey on last year, I think, as well. Like, it, it's a pretty cool deal, and you guys get some good guests on there. You had Bowser on, I think, one year, and hopefully I would assume you'll line this up to get Coach Danielson on. And, um, yeah, it's going to be really cool, and, and uh, I know they're doing a tournament with the collective – the Horseshoe Collective is doing a tournament a couple weeks before, but this one's going to be different. And uh, again, get in now, and it's going to sell out. And and uh, I wonder if Mike Prater, what, what would people bid to have Mike Prater in their foursome? <laughs> They'll pay you not to put me in their foursome. Hey, that, that's all great information and everything, but my mind is just racing right now. I, I'm having a hard time visualizing, and maybe it's just my ignorance, and maybe maybe I'm not giving it enough credit, but uh, does Spencer Danielson even play golf? Can he play? He's athletic. I know it, but can he play golf? Does he play golf? Is this something where I can kick Spencer Danielson's ass in? It might be actually. Yeah, I think there's a. Ch I'm not sure he's actually going to be playing, and he, he, like I said, he's going to make an appearance on Friday, okay. and I think okay. after, uh, maybe <laughs> say hello to everybody when they're arriving, and maybe ride the golf cart around for an hour. Uh, I don't know if he's actually going to be playing because they do have to get to Texas. Um, but in the past, it was a hard no from previous times. I've I've even broached the subject with football coaches at Boise State. So the fact nice. that he's the fact that he's willing to make an appearance at all out in Caldwell, uh, I think is, is going to be awesome. And where he knows he, he, he flat out said, no, this is important. It's a good charity. I want to help raise some money for him. So I'll be there. Um, and so I'm looking forward to that and, uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun day. So again, email me for more information. We got whole sponsorships, all kinds of stuff available Reigns at Bronco nation news.com. We're excited to officially, uh, put that on sale. Uh, Mike, let's uh, finish up here talking a little bit about spring football. Uh, I do want to thank a couple more of our sponsors real quick, get that out of the way. Uh, Lithia Ford of Boise, check them out. Lithia Ford Boise.com. They're sponsoring that hole in one at the tournament. Looking forward to that. Lithia Ford Boise.com. You can view their full inventory of vehicles. They got some great spring sales going on right now. So check them out. Lithia Ford Boise. Dot com Taco Bell, they're uh, supporting the community as well. They're donating hundreds of thousands of dollars for the endowed scholarships for the men's and women's basketball teams over at Boise State. And uh, again, you can return the favor and uh, go uh, eat Taco Bell for your next meal. TacoBellWorks.com. You can get more information. SON Management, the Nicolason family, we appreciate them. And again, they're hiring. Treasure Valley stores are hiring, so check them out. Get more information, tacobellworks.com. The Blue and Orange store, we'll get Travis Hawks and company out there. I think they had Kent Riddle playing with them last year in, in their uh, uh, foursome. So the Blue and Orange store.com, check them out. F free shipping, any order over $40. Uh, if you're in the Boise area, just go to the Boise Town Square Mall. They're on the second floor. Shirts, caps, jerseys, hats, bumper stickers, you name it. The Blue and Orange store, and uh, I, we, it's been this way the last two years. I assume it'll be the be, be that way again, Mike Prater. Those are the uh, the prizes. You win the tournament, you get a nice fat gift card to the Blue and Orange store. So hopefully we can keep that going again this year. Uh, transportation compliance service. If you thought about getting into the trucking industry, don't know how to do it, let them take care of all the paperwork for you. Transcompservice.com. Check them out. Uh, overweight DOT permits. Anything you need to get out there towing that first load in no time. Check them out. Transcompservice.com. Dot com And of course, Bronco Brew Coffee, broncobrew.coffee. Check them out. Help support Boise State Athletics, the NIL game. And again, you can go online, order your coffee, fresh roasted to order coffee at your doorstep within 24 hours, broncobrew.coffee. And Mike Prater, it's, I'm doing what any, uh, any overweight person would do. It's the first day of the month and I'm locking back in here. Uh, leanfeastmeridian.com. Check them out. I was uh, with Dave, their owner, talking to him. And uh, I'm going to be eating primarily lean feast this month, hopefully getting getting uh, trying to fit that next size down for the golf tournament there in May in the polo. So check them out, leanfeastmeridian.com. Healthy, made, uh, you know, fresh, customized, made-to-order meals, two minutes in the microwave, and you're eating surf and turf, steak, shrimp, fish, healthy meals for all different kinds of diets and plans. Check them out, leanfeastmeridian.com. All right, Mike Prater, that we had we were out there at uh, football practice earlier uh, in the week. We had uh, a couple open practices uh, Saturday, and then they'll be open again tomorrow. Um, just your take here. We're, we're uh, what, uh, we were three, four, five, or six practices in, so we're just over a third of the way through spring ball. And I know you guys asked me on Friday to talk about some players I was intrigued to watch kind of the next couple of weeks here in spring ball, but uh, – uh, what are just your general impressions, uh, six practices in here? Well, first of all, Maddox Madsen has been the biggest surprise for me just in terms of his involvement. We've talked about that an awful lot. That dude is doing pretty much everything. I mean, he's QB1 right now. There's no doubt about that, and there really isn't a pecking order. But, you know, he, he is the quarterback for Boise State football when it comes to everything. And, you know, he's not doing the 11-on-11 11 11 team drill stuff, but he's doing everything else. I, I would say he's an active participant in what? Would you say 80, 80 85% of everything they're doing that we're seeing? And, and for the first time that I remember, we're, we're able to go to all the practices. They're wide open for us. And 
Uh, so far, we've been able to see a ton of stuff and meet a lot of kids and and see a lot of new faces. But Maddox Madsen, the old quarterback, is sticking out for me. Can't wait to see how maybe Chris Marshall kind of develops as the wide receiver, see if he pops. Uh, right now, he's not really standing out, but I didn't expect him to be. Uh, I, I think it's all coming together. So far, it's been pretty smooth. I, I like the, the energy in practice. It seems like it's really, really good. And so far, so good. No injuries. Knock on wood so far. It's been pretty routine. We've got a long ways to go, about two, three weeks. We've got the practice, spring spring ball practice, or spring game on April 20th. We'll lead up to that. So 20 days from uh, now, uh, we'll see how it shakes out. But uh, so far, so good. Now, I remember that very first practice. I don't remember when exactly you said it, but you said the quarterback battle doesn't start in fall camp. It started today. And I know you kind of said that jokingly or with a you know, laugh because we none of us expected you know, Maddox Madsen to be doing what he is doing. Yeah. Um, and we're not allowed to um, or we're not supposed to. One of our deals with Spencer Danielson to watch practice is really get into too much of what the depth chart looks like right now because it's, it's not really their depth chart either. They're trying to mix guys on different days with different groups. And so it's kind of hard for us to even say, oh, just because this guy was working with the ones this day, it doesn't mean he's actually number one on the depth chart right now. So uh, with that said, would you say right now Maddox Madsen is the lead is is the leader in the quarterback race? Uh yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, if the season started tomorrow, he wouldn't play because of his physical limitations. And, and probably, I mean, as of right now, it would probably be CJ Tiller. I mean, if there is a, a a pecking order, it would be Madsen Tiller and then Malachi Nelson. But I fully expect Malachi Nelson to just explode. Uh, I expect to see unbelievable progress over these next two weeks uh, behind the scenes this summer. He's going to crank and grind, and that's where he's going to make his most amount of progress. I don't think we're going to walk away from spring ball, the camp or spring game, thinking, oh, Malachi Nelson blew us away. He's going to do what he has to do to kind of build that foundation this spring. Then he's going to disappear for the summer, and then we're going to see him the first week of August, and that's where I think he'll explode. So I, I still think this very well could be a Malachi Nelson football team, but it's not right now. Do you think that – I mean, how important are these next – three weeks for, for a guy like Malachi Nelson to get as much uh, in front of these coaches as he can going into the summer? I think it's important. I mean, again, I think the, the summer will be more important, but I, I think it's important right now just to uh, to look like you belong, to, to, to be able to hang with the guys, to behind the scenes in the meeting rooms and the film rooms to be able to engage. And I would assume that he's doing all that kind of stuff. So uh, I can't sit here and say he's doing all the right things or wrong things, but I would assume Malachi Nelson's doing just fine. Now I gave you uh, Jeremiah Irby. I gave you uh, Amari and McCoy. You know, two corners that I was looking forward to because Jeremiah Irby has really impressed me and what he's done. Uh, I think on your show I called him Jonathan Irby. I'm, I, uh, I I know his name is Jeremiah. I just I, I, don't, I don't know why I did that. But Jeremiah Irby uh, and uh, Amari and McCoy, and then I think I gave you the backup running backs. Uh, the O line. We talked to Mason Randolph the other day. That's going to be an interesting battle at right tackle. Uh, when you're out there, as you said, in your shorts and your short sleeve T-shirt in the 30 degree weather on the blue tomorrow morning, and you got your <laughs> roster and you got your roster in your hand, uh, I know we're all looking at the quarterbacks, you know, pretty much every day. But wh where else have have you been uh, intrigued or been paying attention to this spring, or looking forward to these next couple of weeks paying attention to? Yeah, I mean, I know you mentioned the cornerback. I'm really intrigued by that, and I know you did mention Irby, and and the cornerback situation to me is really really interesting because Markel Reed's penciled in as kind of a starter, but. It, I, I don't buy that for a second. I think there was a three or four or five man competition at cornerback for two spots. And I, I think that's just fascinating for me to watch. Uh, I know on Idaho Sports Talk last Friday, you talked about the right tackle position. There's probably three guys there uh, that are trying to shore up the offensive line. And I've been trying to watch with the offensive line, the mixing and the matching and, and play, you know, guards playing center, centers playing guards, tackles, right tackles playing left tackle and kind of mixing things up here a little bit there. Uh, Spencer Danielson promises us that he would, a lot of experimentation this spring, a lot of mixing and matching, a lot of players playing in a lot of positions that maybe they haven't played before. So I think we're seeing a, a lot of that right now. Uh, nobody's really stood out at, at wide receiver for me. I haven't seen Strawn or Bolt or or Chris Marshall or even Capels kind of stand out at wide receiver. So maybe over these next couple of weeks, you know, as we watch some practice, see if somebody stands out. It's kind of hard for people to stand out in practice, and maybe we'll see some of that in the spring game. There'll be two or three or four stars develop in the spring game there's no doubt about that but uh right now i think it's been kind of business as usual in, in these practices that we see every morning 
Yeah, it's funny because we always hear this from the coaching staff, but we're now hearing it. We're now seeing it with our eyes since we're able to watch the whole practice. Like whenever somebody makes a great play, there's also somebody that got beat or somebody that made a bad play, and so it does go both both ways when you're a coach. And we're I've kind of noticed that a little more where it's like, oh, great interception, and then it's like, oh, terrible pass, or it was like, oh, you know. And so it's you're starting to I think as you as we've been able to watch more of these fuller practices and not just the stretching and that kind of stuff. I think it's been a huge benefit and very appreciative, thankful to Spencer Danielson for allowing that. I think it's been, I think they're realizing too, that it's not necessarily any kind of negative to, to them. And we're getting, uh, you know, more, I think, informed opinions on what we're seeing. Um, I haven't really talked about this, Mike Prater, as we kind of wrap up the show. Uh, somebody was asking about BNN covering the spring game live. Um, I will just say that uh, we tried. We, we did try. We made a very lucrative offer to Boise State. I'm not. I'm not ashamed or, or you know, uh, not proud. Whatever. Not sure. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to say. But we, when we uh, negotiated the deal for the softball game, which was supposed to be our first live broadcast, uh, those discussions also included the spring game. We met multiple times about this, and um, there was serious interest. They had a lot of turnover in the uh, athletic department at Boise State with. Uh, Dom Sheldon leaving, who runs their video department team. Mike Walsh leaving, who was heavily involved in this. And they're kind of swimming upstream right now, trying to replace a few full-time positions. And they would have been the ones producing the broadcast. Um, I also do think that, and I talked to Spencer Danielson about this, new offensive coordinator, a lot of guys this year, I just don't think they were super crazy about uh, Georgia Southern having any kind of, uh, uh, you know how coaches are, Mike Prater. If it doesn't have to be out there, why give all these plays to Georgia Southern all summer to look at? Um, okay. So nope. I will I will just say that uh, Bronco Nation News made a very, what I would say is a, uh, you know, company changing offer uh, that we, we really tried to broadcast the spring game. We really wanted to. We just found out late last week the final decision was, was a no. Uh, but I'm very proud that of sponsors of all the subscribers, everybody that got me to a point where I could put up, you know, a very significant amount of money that I was going to try to make work to, to make, take this next step for Bronco nation news and stream the spring game. So they're not streaming it. It was Boise state's choice, not ours. We did talk about it. We really tried for a while there. I thought it might happen, um, but it's not happening. So no Boise state has decided not to stream, not to stream their spring game at all this year. Part of that's on the coaches not wanting to get out there. Part of that is, like I said, they're just short staffed right now. I totally get it. And uh, hopefully BNN can continue in the future to push for things like this, Mike, and push for live events, whether it's uh, women's basketball, soccer, softball, hopefully one day men's basketball. And that is in our future, um, things like that. But uh, couldn't quite pull it off this year. Yeah, nice try, BJ. Uh, I, that's kind of cool that you're trying and uh, just keep grinding and that kind of stuff will start sticking for sure. Uh, any final thoughts, Mike Prater? What do we got coming up on Idaho Sports Talk today? Yeah, we're, we're talking to Gloria Navarez today, the Mountain West Commissioner. So she's had a whirlwind couple of weeks in terms of uh, going to basketball games and meetings and CFP meetings. We're going to talk about uh, CFP revenue, uh, which she was very much a part of that has now been finalized and how much money the Group of Five is going to get. And uh, I know that they're a little bit disappointed in that kind of money. We'll talk about uh, you know the Mountain West and it's running basketball, San Diego State, and that kind of stuff. So catching up at 5 o'clock today with Mountain West Commissioner Gloria Navarez live. That'll be can't miss stuff. Looking forward, uh, looking forward to that. Uh, again, uh, Gloria Navarre is three to six. They'll be on today. Idaho Sports Talk. Prater, Johnny, JP, Bob, the whole crew. So check them out. Idaho Sports Talk today. KTIK.com, the KTIK app, uh, online, all the different ways you can. I like the, uh, are you the one that posts the podcast, Mike Prater? I am. You get it posted pretty quick after the show. I enjoy that because there's a lot of times I can't listen live, but by 6.30 or so, it pops right up there on my uh, on my phone, the Idaho Sports nice. Talk podcast, and uh, you nice. break up the interviews separately plus the full show, and I highly recommend that to folks. If they're looking to – they can't watch the show live, you can go on there later in the evening and, um, you know, and you can uh, – Check out, and there you go. Friday, you guys had Mike Burns, Dan Dickow. You talked about Caples, BNN Report right there. It's all right there on your phone. So Appreciate that, DJ. Thank you. Uh, check that out on uh, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, uh, various different places there. Mike, appreciate it. Thanks to JP as well. And, yeah, get working on the next column. Let's go, Mike Prater. Come on. It'll happen this week. So every week or every – yeah, once a week for the rest of the month. And uh, spring football is here. You know me. I get fired up and excited for football. And we certainly have a couple of very important basketball games. I cannot wait until the basketball signings come. I believe this is the week that Boise State signed Cam Martin last year, early in April. And I believe they signed Omar Stanley last year, kind of in the middle of April. So over these next couple of weeks, if I remember my timeline right, uh, hopefully we'll get some Boise State basketball, new, some new players from Boise State basketball. I cannot wait to see who those guys are.
Again, register now before it sells out. May 31st, the third annual Bronco Nation News Golf Tournament benefiting the Idaho Youth Sports Commission. Again, morning flight, afternoon flight. Uh, we'd love to have you join. It's 150 bucks a person, $600 for a foursome that covers your greens fees, your cart, your lunch, your drinks, all kinds of stuff. And that's uh, going to be the event of the summer. So check it out. And hopefully you guys will join us. Email me, reigns at bronconationnews.com or go to bron bronconationnews.com slash golf for more information but those foursomes are on sale now already got a couple emails during the show mike prater so they're going to sell out fast don't wait we'll be listening three o'clock to uh, prater and johnny on idaho sports talk prater in the ball game be back with jade tust uh sometime tomorrow these tuesday practices are kind of throwing a wrench in our uh, plans here but stay tuned we'll let you know on the broadcast schedule and uh as always if news breaks we'll have it covered at bronconationnews.com have a great rest of your monday and we'll uh, talk to you guys later bronconationnews live here at bronconationnews.com